an NFC Championship game rematch. It's the coach. You're watching week five of the NFL on EA Sports. All right, coach. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Straight ahead is a rematch of last year's NFC Championship game between the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles. This one taken from the seven. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by their 6-5 quarterback out of North Dakota State. It's Carson Wentz. I love just about everything about him. Love his game, love his makeup, love his moxie. One of my favorite words. This guy's a competitor. Gritty, tough, you name it, he's got it. But he did throw an interception in last week's game. That contributed to a loss. And despite the fact he threw three touchdown passes, he's going to be out there redoubling his efforts and trying to play better. Wentz now on first down. Look up good to Marquise Wilson. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. A gain of six there on first. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Now Wentz throwing on second down. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A look at the numbers for Aguilar a week ago. Eight catches, 92 yards, and a touchdown. And I get the feeling that he loves this matchup. I mean, the unit he's going against is in the bottom half of the league against the pass. He had to have circled this one on the schedule and said to himself, this should be a big game. Now it's the crazy state along. Jay Ajayi. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. And Xavier Rhodes there in on the stop. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line. Hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Wentz to throw on second down. And he's got the veteran here. It's Mike Wallace. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 and a first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Now it's the all-purpose back. This is Darren Sproles. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. Now look, that wasn't a huge game, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings, that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched it more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Sheldon Richardson. Breaking throw to get him for a loss of seven. So a look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. <laughs> they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stopped your team just the way you're supposed to. Wentz now to throw. Goes underneath for Sproles. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It's a gain of five. And it'll be fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. And that is no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. 
So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. Dehan, Andy, hey, can't, can't. Dehan, I got you. Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Michael Bennett's versatility, being able to play any position along the defensive front, allows him to make those types of plays. He finds good matchups and gets into the offensive backfield. And there it works for a tackle for loss. Second down, Cousins. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Brandon Graham in there to sack him for a loss of six. Two plays so far, a run and a pass attempt, and both have gone backwards. Probably not how they drew that up. Not at all. <laughs> Looking for a better play coming up on third. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. Hey, hey, we, uh, we got four. We got four down, four down. From the gun, here's Cousins. He'll find Thielen working the middle. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. They do get ten back, but still a ways to go on fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say, I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. now gets set to head back onto the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails... Less of a field goal attempt for him. And he's going to be taken down here at about the 10. The tackle goes to Harrison Smith. Quickly now a look at the defensive starters for Minnesota. Named an All-Pro for the first time in 2017, cornerback Xavier Rhodes relishes the challenge of guarding the game's top wide receivers. He'll trail them anywhere, even into the opposing backfield, to make big-time plays. They fake the give. Now wins. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Eric Kendricks in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. We've seen a couple of Super Bowls start two to nothing. The first score of this game could have very easily been a safety. That was close there. It was close, and while it didn't happen in this game, it's funny you bring up the Super Bowls because that would have been what Super Bowl Forty Six, Giants Patriots, I'm testing my memory, and also yeah. Super Bowl Forty Eight, which was Broncos Seattle when the snap went over the head of the QB. And guess what? There's two zip Seattle right out of the gate. Seventeen. Yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Wentz going to lead his guys up first and ten, and he's a perfect five for five here to begin the game. They'll run it now out of the gun. Room here to run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Ten more there, and another first down. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. And oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends that might be flexed out, 
They've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Go, go. Play action. Now wins. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. First time these two have hooked up this afternoon, and it's a first down. Can't have enough good pass catching tight ends in the NFL. And the Eagles, they wanted to replenish their stock. They lost Trey Burton in the offseason. So they selected Dallas Goddard out of South Dakota State in the second round. And he is nothing but a big time pass catcher. What a great strike. And South Dakota State didn't offer him a scholarship out of high school. He walked on there. Yeah, so now Zach Ertz has a running mate at tight end. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Four down, four down, check. Here we go, here we go. Here's a giant. <laughs> and able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it third and one. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it, and boy, the reward was... And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Jay Ajayi, his second touchdown on the season, and the Eagles have taken the early lead. Well, they were just hoping that run would pick up the first. They got the whole enchilada. And I'm so used to teams on third down. Doesn't matter how far they need for a first down. Throw them the ball. Instead, they run it. And as you said, picked up the first down. And then some. And then some. In fact, everything. All the way for a touchdown. Terrific play. And now out comes Minnesota. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. All right, now here we go. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. That would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. Stops shy of the 45. Showed off a nice little move on the play, though. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes. You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. In this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline as a play car. You're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Eight yards on the return following a punt of 41. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. 
Throwing on first is Wentz. This one complete to Sproles. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. And they've got it here with a first down. Wentz going to lead his guys up first and ten. And he's completed all seven of his passes thus far. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Eric Kendricks in on the tackle. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Again, he'll run it again at Sproles. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Watch your son! Watch your son! Now Wentz on third down. And incomplete here on third down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Here's Cheryl's. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. They run it again with Cook. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. Go, 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 run, run, Give him four run. on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. Cousins on third and two. Got a man, it's right. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Quick slant there, gets him the first down, six yards on the play. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. Now a play fake here on first down. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Mike Bennett, he's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Now a second down throw for Cousins. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's right. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. First down, here's the run of Cook. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Nigel Braddon brings him down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally 
and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Cousins now on second down. And his throw is incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every go, time go. a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. On third down, Cousins. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. They'll start out on the ground with Sproul. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves his sticks. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit, thanking them for that much space to rumble. First down, Wentz. Incomplete to Zach Ertz. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What is it, three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. This is a Jai. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. They run again with a Jai. And he'll go down at the 28. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Oh, yeah. yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. down. Ertz has it left side. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that player action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Marquise Wilson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Eagles add on to their lead. The catch and the touchdown, they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver. So the drive will end up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. 
Elliott now to kick this one away. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrill. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now we move our focus to Stephon Diggs. A chance maybe here for them to get him more involved. They're down here on the scoreboard, and he's been very quiet. And the silence has been deafening for his team. They don't need that at all. They need fireworks. They need explosive plays. They need him touching the football in any way possible. Maybe go to some jet sweeps. Anything to get him going. Something to get him the ball. We'll see if they can do it. A throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there. Need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Four down, four down. On second down, Cousins again. Going deep for Diggs. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Mills. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Oh, man, Brandon, not a real good throw that time. It looked like he tried to put a little too much air under this one, and it turned into a floater. And defensively, this is a dream. He could have fair caught that one. That was way too easy. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 27. So after the INT, here's Wentz. This complete left side to Aguilar. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Here we go, here we go. On second down, here's Wentz. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Marquise Wilson, the one he was trying to get it to. And that'll make it third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more hey, air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute Back bullet. From the gun on third down, wins. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone up and down the field. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. They'll run it now. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Give the tackle there to Daniil Hunter. Well, when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. The Eagles on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This time it's third and three. Working from the gun. Wentz. And he connects with Ertz. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. An eagle first down there. Wentz to Ertz. And the names that end in TZ. Come on now. Let's go. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Sheldon Richardson there to make the play. I 
on, and we remind on, you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The so, coach. Sorry, we get slap happy up here sometimes. Blitz. A second down pass Blitz. play there, but it's incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Already a pair of third down conversions for them on this drive. But right now, they need five yards on this third down try. They'll run it now out of the gun. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. It's a five-yard pickup, but spotted a few chain links short of the first. So a little bit of decision time here coming up on fourth down. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. You'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good, but there is a flag Offside. down. He might get Decent. another shot at this. Well, we looked go, at each go. other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Automatic yeah, first down. Easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. That play seems to never work, but they were able to draw him off on fourth, and now it's first and ten. With 20! Wentz now on first down. Over the middle here to Wilson. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. They'll run it now out of the gun. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. of about eight. They were in the top five in sacks in the league coming into this one. That's their third one in this game. Obviously, pass rush has been a strength of this team all year long. And apparently, they're not satisfied with top five. They want to climb that ladder. Yeah, I think it goes back to their offseason. They decide to make it a priority, and it's working out. On third and long, it's wins. And this is caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Carson Wentz with two first-half touchdown passes. And the Eagles had six to their lead. Elliott now to add the extra point. Elliott good on the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. Elliott now to kick this one away. Here comes Sheryls. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find yellow, out yellow, just yellow. how much they trust yellow. their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Fletcher Cox able to get him for a loss of about three. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. 
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Here comes Sheriffs. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never wanted to make something more important than it actually is. Right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Second down, Cousins. He's got it complete to Diggs, right side. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. Let's go, let's go. A give. This is Cook. And he's got room. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. That good for 19 and a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He can make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. They run it for the first time with a backup Murray. The tackle was made by Michael Bennett. Brandon, twins. all things Watch considered, the they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case. That play got bottled up. Throw left side on target to Thielen. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The Vikings on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and nine. We got four. We got four. From the gun, here's Cousins. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Sidney Jones. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Trying for the tight end. Ertz, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Harrison Smith. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. 
Uh, they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and saying, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. Following the interception, Cousins. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So now go, second go. and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again, Cousins, on second and ten. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Off the play fake, Cousins. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Malcolm Jenkins. And he will bring it out past the 20-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they're throwing an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Here we go, here we go. They'll begin the drive with Sproles. And an alley to run. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They run with a giant. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards there as they move the chains. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. here this afternoon and that last carry it puts him over 100 yards now for the day now it's a game and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line they'll wind up losing three yards here and it'll bring up a second and 13 Partner, I think there's a lesson there. Some days you're just having a really tough time, and for the defense, today has been that day. But after that play, what do you learn? You can still make plays even when the other guy's having success against you. Field. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. From the gun, it's Wins. He's going to float this one deep right side. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. Here's Brad Nordman now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Cheryl's to return. 
We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. They begin on the ground. And some room to work. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. You pick up another first down with that run. On first and ten, Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Ronald Darby that time, the one who got a hand in and knocked it free. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock Alvin away and bring up second down. A second down throw for Cousins. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. I think we've seen this before. Someone's down three scores. That situation there, it's just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, a bad number three right now. Three score game, third quarter, three and out. Not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little longer as this one goes. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. I thought he did a pretty good job there to get back what he could, but let's face it, that sack on second down, talk about throwing a wrench into the works. It certainly did. Yeah, he did everything he could there, trying to pick up some positive yardage, and he did, but not enough. Sproles, the return. They'll call that a 61-yard punt. He got all of that one. And possession will switch hands first and 10. It's time for our player spotlight right now as we get a look at Carson Wentz. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well. But the pressure... Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 22. begin the drive and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started so while the offense has had a big day no one on that side of the ball is excited about seeing a loss like that their goal to make every play positive and when you have a bad one like that your next goal is to not let it spiral into more Wentz going to throw oh nearly picked and yeah, maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Now Wentz on third down. Burt has it left side. And down he'll go at the 25. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. 
Well, they try to swing it out left into the flat, complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Go, go. Unable to find anyone open. The Vikings on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third down and 12. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Let's it fly for Thielen. And that one incomplete. Had some position, but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man, and you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Carson Wentz, along with his offense, heading back out there for their next possession. He's been a good game manager. They're winning here in the third quarter, but really, the ground game is where it's been at for them, hasn't it? So whatever the game plan was, you just got to focus on continuing to run the football. And really, that takes the pressure off of the guy throwing it around. Doesn't have to be the focal point. Hand it off. Let him chew up the yardage in big plays. And your team's winning. The only people upset... The fantasy guys who may have started him at quarterback <laughs> in their leagues. And we'll see if they continue with a recipe of the ground game. Come on now. Come on now. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Ladies. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. Watch left, watch left, watch left. Start right there, start right there. There we go, back man. Lady! They stay on the ground. Again, it's a Jai. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Shotgun now for Wells. Caught by the tight end Ertz. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. An eagle first down. Wins to Ertz. Wins now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Four down, four down. Go, go. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Tackle made by Everson Griffin. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, on, gritty on, run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And they'll run here. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. The tackle made there by Linval Joseph. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. 
Now it appears we're going to get whistles and a stop. A man down on the return. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Norton it on to kick as he sends it away. Minnesota. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Hey, 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 hey. Four down, four down, four down. Cousins now on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. The Vikings on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. The hug! Whatever it is! Cousins now. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first, thanks to a flashy little spin move. First target, first catch, and a first down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Cousins now to throw on first down. And he couldn't hang on. Would have been their fourth pick of the game. Instead, second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game. And to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on. And they just play better and better. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. On second down, Cousins again. Going deep for Diggs. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Rodney McLeod that time able to knock it away. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes hey, go, like that downfield. On third down, Cousins. He's going to float this one deep right side. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he is finally out of bounds all the way down at the 30. Pass interference. Defense. So with a big gainer anyways, they'll go ahead and take that instead of the pass interference call. They didn't need the penalty. Hey, it would have been different, right, if they had somehow lost some yardage somewhere, but they did not. Gained all they could, down to the spot of the foul. Nothing to be gained by taking the penalty. First down, here's Cousins. Over the middle here to Rudolph. Heck of a broken tackle and able to work this down near the 23. A gain of six there on first. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. On second down, Cook. Cook able to escape, and he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Call it again is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Hey, 
From the red zone now, Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you yellow, see him yellow, pointing, yellow. communicating. There yellow. he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. This will be caught at about the six. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. The Vikings first down. Diggs able to find his way free and get the catch from Cousins. They've been in the red zone three times in this game and have not scored a single point. Can they break through here on second and goal? They come out here in the eye. They go play action here on first down. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. Good job. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Now a second down throw for Cousins. And a pressure gets to him again. Fletcher Cox in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. This will be caught inside the 10. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the 5 at the 6. 11 yards, but still not enough. Fourth down. Completed pass brings up a fourth down situation. Do you play where, analytics where? on this one? Well, you know, what do your analytics tell you about going for it here? I wonder what they would say. They tell me you're down by this mark. That his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Sidney Jones. And not much on the return there. He'll take it only up to the nine-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage. They've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. They'll start out on the run with the Giant. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Come on now, all. Come on now. Let's go. Play action to Sproles. Wins. Oh, looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. A nice gain of 21 yards. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era when we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. They'll run with a former Badger. It's Corey Clement. And not much of an opening there as he's only going to get this to about the 32. It's Everson Griffin who made the tackle. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. And once again, they go with Sproles. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak in all games. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. 
And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Now it's Spurs, and they'll stop him right on the midfield stripe. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, he's just a whole lot of guy. He is well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. They're able to locate Wilson. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back him up five. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Four down, four down. Cut. Cut. This is Clinton, and he'll be stopped up quickly here at the 38. They get one yard back there to make it second and 14. Let's go. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for Philadelphia... They boost their record up to a strong 4-1. and one, And they will hit the road next week to take on the New York Giants. Meanwhile, for Minnesota, they drop below 500 to 2-3 and three with a loss. And they'll be at home next week for a date with the Arizona Cardinals. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.